What is going on, guys and girls? This is Ghost Robo, and we are taking a look at Injustice Gods Among Us, me giving you my thoughts and impressions. What you're looking at is the demo that's available on Xbox Live Marketplace and PlayStation Network, but I'm going to be talking about a much more complete build of the game that I played last week at PAX East. Now, I've been following this game since June of last year when it was unveiled at E3. Most of you have been like, Ghost, you got to play this game. A lot of comments on Twitter and messages saying, are you going to play Injustice? Are you going to play Injustice? And I think the answer is yes, I'm going to play Injustice because it plays really well and it's a whole lot of fun. Now, I was not allowed to film at PAX East. About seven seconds after I started, they said no taking pictures, no recording with video cameras, which to me makes no sense. The game was out on the show floor. It was just a TV on the side of a wall with a, a two demo stations, and I did not understand why they didn't want me to cover it. But that's why you're getting to see three different characters here uh, from the demo, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Lex Luthor. On the default difficulty, it was pretty darn easy um, in this single player mode, but I'm sure as you progress through, it will ramp up, and of course, you can always bump to hard, and more importantly, you can play versus. So I got to play at least six or seven matches against Jake, and we tried out almost every single character that was on display. So we played Aquaman, we played Raven, played Wonder Woman, we played um, The Flash, we played Green Lantern, we played Green Arrow, we played a, just a slew of dudes. I, I don't have the full roster on, on hand right now, but a majority of the characters we played, Harley Quinn, Joker, um, and they all are very different, which I think is the best thing you can say about this game. Every character feels like that character from the comic books. They really nailed the powers, the ability, the speed, the, ho the whole overall aesthetic and feel of said character for each entry into Injustice, which I think is a, is a great, great compliment. Now, it has some very interesting systems, um, things that I grasp pretty well, uh, but not fully, and I, I won't until the game's out. There is definitely a power meter you can see on the bottom of the screen, and throughout this video you'll see me using it, as well as executing a finisher attack uh, towards the end with Batman. But those finisher attacks are sort of the trademark of what Injustice shows off. They're big, epic, cinematic attacks where, you know, the Flash runs around the entire world and then smashes into his enemy, or Batman drives the Batmobile into his opponent, and they look really cool. Now, some characters have far more impressive finishers than others, which I don't really understand. It's like, they design five of them really, really intensely, and then they're like, oh, you have to come up with ones for these other guys. But nonetheless, they're still pretty cool. All the character intros are fun. Um, they definitely mess around with stances a lot. The majority of the characters that I played uh, had two different stances. You know, Wonder Woman, you'll see, can go whip to sword, and there's a whole different, uh, Green Arrow can pull out lots of different arrows, and, and just a lot of different things with stances. Um, as well as combos, but the big, the big unique point of this game is the environmental interaction. And uh, when I played it back at PAX Prime last year, I really didn't know how to execute the moves, and it didn't seem very clear. But now there is a right bumper button prompt, uh, or I'm guessing R1 or R2 if you're on PS3, that every time um, you're near one of these interactable objects will pop up, and you can use it to your advantage to take down your opponent. Now, they aren't necessarily guaranteed hits. Maybe you pull a, a giant gargoyle off the wall and smash it down, and if you miss, you're left vulnerable for half a second. So it's, it's not like a, oh, walk in front of some cool object, press right bumper to win, and in fact, more often than not, when I was playing against human opponents, I missed. Um, it, you have to really set it up, and, and you can use it as part of combos, kind of, okay, I'm going to push him over towards this direction. I know there is a gigantic, you know, car that I can throw him into, so I'm going to push him this way and then execute that, that right bumper strike at the precise right moment, which does feel pretty cool and is a lot of fun. Like I said, the characters have a very good variety, so pitting them against each other not only has a fighting game uh, enjoyability to it, but also a comic book slash nostalgia slash superhero fun. In, in the sense of, you know, having all these DC characters battle against each other, and I think any fan of any of these characters will be pleasantly surprised with what they've done with their favorite. Now, there's a whole bunch of uh, extra DLC, paid costumes and such, a lot of it tied to pre-orders. I don't know how most people feel about that. To me, I don't need new costumes to make a fighting game more fun, but I'm sure some people will be interested to know, um, and it seems like they're going to have a lot, a lot of paid DLC, um, at least aesthetically. I'm guessing there'll be DLC characters down the line as well. Maybe they, they did with Mortal Kombat, uh, and since this is the same team, I would venture to say they will do the same as well. Now, my only concern with the game, uh, and sort of my, my negative side after playing it for per, probably, I guess, an, uh, close to an hour, I think, after, you know, my seven or eight matches or however many I played um, at PAX East and then back at PAX Prime anyways, is that it's basically a redressed Mortal Kombat 9. Now, Mortal Kombat 9 is a fantastic game, probably my favorite fighting game of the last couple of years, um, along with Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, but... You could really, if you wanted to be cynical, if you wanted to be sort of a pessimist, you could boil this down to, hey, you know, the folks at NetherRealm just took Mortal Kombat 9 and skinned some DC costumes on top of their characters. Um, you've noticed already in this video, there's some very eerily similar attacks, with, and, you know, that, that's going to happen when you have any fighting game, of course. Your Street Fighter suffers the same problem with its characters, but especially because the look, the aesthetic, the sound, a lot of it feels a very Mortal Kombat 9, and, and don't get me wrong, it's not a bad thing, but 
if you wanted to be someone who said, why is this game not worth $60, you'd say, well, it's basically just a mod for Mortal Kombat 9. But they, again, they do do enough different with the crazy finishers, um, with the stage interaction, and make each stage kind of a, a battlefield and kind of a fun choice. Normally, I just randomize stages and it's like, who cares? But me and Jake found that there were definitely some that were more enjoyable than others. You're going to Arkham Asylum, we're going to this one with this giant robot. We're a lot of fun to then use those interactable objects to your advantage, and I'm sure people will get sort of, you know, bias based on what stages they like the best and which ones they have the most fun with and which ones cater to their style of gameplay. And there definitely was, like I said, a very huge variety from your Lex Luthers down to your Aquamans in terms of speed and, and, and size, and it, it has everything that you want from a fighting game. They've done it really well. It's tightly controlled. Um, the move list seemed decently extensive. There's this weird, uh, like, I don't even remember what it's called, you'll see in this video, but it's like a conflict mode where you press one of the face buttons, I don't even understand why, um, but it, it looks pretty good. It, the demo, for some reason, doesn't look as good as the game I played on the show floor at PAX East. I don't know if it's just because this is an earlier build, I don't know if it's because the TV they had there was better, and I've been hearing this from a decent number of people, that it doesn't look as good in the demo as they were expecting. I think it looks better, um... I think the final build will look better, but yeah, that, those combo, those attacks are just strange. I know that was kind of a strange tangent from uh, weird fighting, battling, Dragon Ball Z clash compared to graphics. But anyways, the game overall is really awesome. I really enjoy it. I'm excited to play it. It releases April 16th of this month. I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. If you're into fighting games, if you're into DC, definitely a worthwhile day one purchase. If not, if you're sort of iffy and if you've already spent hundreds of hours in Mortal Kombat 9 and, you know, you don't really need to see your favorites from DC in action, I, you might want to rent it. Um, but nonetheless, it's been a very fun game. It's one that me and Jake waited in line over and over again uh, to play again and again and again. And a, and a show where there's a lot of options for things to play, that says something really positive about the game. Uh, and I am looking forward to it. As an extensive single-player mode, there's, like, XP gaining and a bunch of random stuff. I'm sure it's going to boil down to just fights. But Mortal Kombat 9 had a really good single-player mode, so I am excited to check this one out for you guys in just about a week and a half. Until that time, though, let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit that like button if you're excited for Injustice and you want me to play it on April 16th. I will make videos for you guys if interested. And yeah, thanks so much. Have a great day. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time, guys and girls, we'll see you all later.